Please, God, take the words that are in my mouth and the meditations that are in my heart. Make them acceptable in your sight. The Lord, you're my strength and redeemer. Amen. 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 We've been blessed again by the providence of Almighty God mm -hmm. to be here on another Lord's day. Yeah. I know some people take this lightly mm -hmm. and may take it even for granted. Yeah. But you and I, mm -hmm. we are blessed to be here. Yeah. Yeah. In the gospel that has been written by the personal mm -hmm. physician who attends to the Apostle Paul, mm -hmm. who's accompanied him on several of his journeys, mm -hmm. and who writes the history book of the New Testament. Mm -hmm. But he writes a two-part volume. He addresses his works to the author. In the book that bears his name, the gospel, written by St. Luke. Chapter number seven. I want to look at chapter seven and begin at verse number 18. And Go down to verse number 23. I'm reading from the NIV, which stands for New International Version. I want you to listen to this. There is tension in this text that's powerful. You can feel it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are some questions that will be raised this morning. Mm -hmm. That have implications for every one of us here. Nah. Listen to this. <laughs> John's disciples told him about all these things. Calling two of them, he sent them to the Lord to ask, Are you the one who is to come? Or should we expect someone else? <laughs> When the men came to Jesus, they said, John the Baptist sent us to you to ask, are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? Mm -hmm. At that very time, Jesus cured many who had diseases, sicknesses, and evil spirits, mm -hmm. and gave sight to many who were blind. So he, meaning Jesus, replied to the messengers, Go back and report to John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have never seen a cleanse, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Mm -hmm. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on the account of me. Be mm -hmm. the words of the Lord. Amen. 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 We've been looking at a series of sermons about the four best places for a Christian to live. Mm -hmm. We started out looking at some places across the world mm -hmm. where folk could live. Looked at some best places to live in the United States. Last week we looked at five best places to live and if you only have a social security check. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we looked at some affordable places to live in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I want to continue with that idea, and I've been looking at some places throughout our nation, and I thought about it, and it made sense to me that perhaps everybody here is not ready 
to pull up stakes and move. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe everybody here is not in a place where they can relocate to a different part of the world or the United States. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, mm -hmm. since we're talking about movement, maybe mm -hmm. we ought to then look at some of the best places uh, to visit instead of move. <laughs> you know? So uh, I went to U.S. News and World Report, which annually gives out reviews of places like this, and they have, uh, in their latest edition of the best places, they have come up with a list of the 10 best places in the United States to visit. Visit and when the criteria for these visits are set. These are affordable places to visit. All right, we're going to stretch your dollars this morning. We get you out of Jersey City. And we're going to get you somewhere where you can visit and get the most bang for your buck. Is that all right? All right. So instead of giving the whole list of 10, we narrowed it down to the top five. Mm. Okay? Y'all ready? Mm -hmm. uh, five most affordable places to live or to visit in the United States. Coming in at number five is Charleston, South Carolina. Come on, all y'all South Carolinians. Hey, Amen. Very affordable place to visit. What makes it uh, such an attractive place is it's a, got all of the old world charm. Cobblestone streets, horse drawn buggies. Folk down there even say, ma'am and sir. Good day, thank you. Some of those things that are kind of lost on some of us northern travelers. Uh, in addition to being one of the uh, nicer places to visit down south, uh, it also uh, was the place where Red Butler would live in Gone with the Wind. Charleston, been to Charleston, nice, charming southern town. So, nice southern hospitality mm -hmm. and nice and expensive place to visit. Coming in at number four on affordable places to visit in the United States is New Orleans. What? Or New Orleans. Well, what makes New Orleans particularly affordable after you get your plane uh, ticket? Exactly. <laughs> 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 is that New Orleans is a mecca in terms of culture, mm -hmm. good food, mm -hmm. good live entertainment. You know, folk out there, they, I better go to number three. <laughs> <laughs> number three is our nation's capital, mm -hmm. Washington, D.C. Let me give you a hot tip. Mm -hmm. If you want to go to Washington and see it in this uh, splendid regalia before it gets really Rework. <laughs> Our seniors mm. are planning a trip to Washington, D.C. And they put you on some good, affordable payment plan. Yeah. <laughs> Pay a little bit now, mm -hmm. yeah. a little bit every month, then October you can you can just go with them. Mm -hmm. They're gonna go over and see what makes DC such a great buy. Now be honest with you, D.C. is probably, you're going to go there, you're going to get sent back in terms of housing, and you're going to have to pay for the hotel room, but what makes it affordable and why it shows up on the list is that the nation's capital has so many things that are free. You can go to the Smithsonian Museums, you can go to the National Zoo, you can go to a lot of monuments and a lot of places in Washington, D.C. There's always a lot of stuff to do. Mm -hmm. 
and with the recent opening of the African American Heritage Museum, mm -hmm. there and the Dr. King Memorial, there are a whole lot of things you can do in DC. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. All right. Now, number two on the list is Yosemite. Yeah, that's the park there. That's the big park in California's Sierra Nevadas. Now, people are like, well, I want to go there. Well, uh, just last week, I was online checking out Yosemite, and would you know that they had the first grizzly bear spotting of the year? <laughs> the grizzlies are waking up. Nature is at its best. If you never seen a grizzly up close, go to Yosemite. <laughs> Yosemite National Park has a lot of camping. What makes it affordable is, you know, you can camp out, you can go see uh, nature at its very, very best. A uh, lot of hiking, a lot of trails, a lot of good stuff to do. So if you love nature and stuff like that, you know, get a plane and go over to Yosemite, all right? Amen. All right. Number one on the list is not Jersey City, I'm sorry. <laughs> But number one on the list as the most affordable place to live, and I mean a vacation to see an attraction in the United States, is Yellowstone National Park. Yeah, Yellowstone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you know you heard about Yogi Bear and all that? But this is the real Yellowstone. Uh, uh, it, on the picture there is a picture of one of the main attractions at uh, Yellowstone called Old Faithful. Mm -hmm. It's a guy, geyser that has been going off for, for tens of, uh, uh, of years, decades, and it has been going off on schedule day after day after day. She's old reliable. She continues to spout, and uh, people come from all over the world to see the waterfalls, the great gorges that have been dug out uh, over time, and it's a wonderful place to visit. What makes it extremely affordable is a lot of folk who go to the, to the Yellowstone National Park, they don't stay in hotels. Right, right. They drive an RV, and, and they don't have an RV, they go get a little pup tent, and they sleep outside. So if you like rattlesnakes and <laughs> I'm just saying. I, I, I ain't the rattlesnake. I don't know. But I'm just saying. Okay? So I know, Reverend, I know what you're saying. Well, I'm probably not uh, going to go to New Orleans or, or go to Charleston soon or, or the Sierra Nevadas or, or any place like that. Uh, Reverend, you got anything local? And just because you asked, <laughs> we come up with the five top rated tourist attractions in New Jersey. Okay. Now, these are all subjective because every time I look on the internet, you know, somebody likes this and somebody likes that. But here's a list of the five top rated tourist attractions in New Jersey. Number five is the Princeton and the Battlefield State Park. Now, they were like, what's that? Well, this is a 200-acre park uh, that commemorates the Battle of Princeton in 1777. It was the last major battle that George Washington fought against the British. And also, in 1772, right near there, uh, was the Clark House Museum that was built in that year. A lot of wonderful history, a lot of war buffs continue to go to the Princeton uh, Battlefield State Park, uh, and it's right about maybe 40 to uh, 50 minutes from our door. Uh, number four on the list is the grounds for sculpture. Now, when I discovered this, I said, wow, this is in New Jersey, right outside Hamilton, New Jersey, which is down by Trenton. There is a, a park, a museum, that has sculptures. You see this old sculpture, the, the, the uh, husband and wife with the pitchfork, or oh, it used to be on, uh, 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 right, I'm not Chris, 
cornflakes and all that green acres, you see that. Uh, so they got all of these sculptures, and you walk around the park and you see stuff that look lifelike, and uh, it, it's right here about, you know, about an hour away for folk to see. Mm -hmm. Number three on the list is right in West Orange, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. The Thomas Edison National Historic Park. People come all over the world because of what Edison has done. He's done. He discovered the, uh, the light bulb. Uh, a lot of you who listen to music, he was uh, very instrumental with the, uh, the phonograph and a lot of those uh, things. And this is a tribute to him. Uh, in fact, uh, he's a New Jersey native, uh, born in Menlo, uh, Park, Menlo Park, New Jersey, Edison native, and named after him. And so, uh, great history right in West Orange. Just get on 280 and you'll be right there. Mm -hmm. All right? Number two! All right, these, are, uh, these attractions are, are, are great because they are inexpensive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Old Victoria uh, in Cape May. These old homes in Cape May. Well, how do you get to Cape May? You ride on the, on the, uh, on the parkway until you get the exit zero. <laughs> <laughs> Brennan and I went down there a few years ago and I was fascinated. They got an exit zero? I think they were trying to tell us something. <laughs> well, that's the very, very tip of the state. And you got the Cape May Lighthouse and Right there, you got nothing but the Atlantic Ocean and the breeze, and you know, um, Atlantic Ocean. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Cape May was very instrumental because six former presidents have had summer homes in Cape May. Mm. Very historic place. Cape May is still known as the bread and breakfast capital of the United States. If you're in the B and B, uh, there's no better place to go than in Cape May. So, you probably figured out that Jersey City didn't make this list easy. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, we're talking about uh, the places, attractions in New Jersey, and you guessed it, it is Atlantic City. Now, even with all of the stuff that's been going on in Atlantic City lately, it is still a good place to visit. Uh, you can still walk on the boardwalk for free. And if you don't want to walk, give somebody a couple of dollars, they'll push you down in there. <laughs> uh, Atlantic City has been going under uh, 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 this reimagining itself. And, uh, you know, of course, you can still go there and pull on the one arm bandit and give them all your money. But also, it's becoming quite a destination, Atlantic City, because of uh, the uh, outlets that are there. You can go get a coach bag and Eddie Bauer and all the folk are hanging out there. And it's become quite a destination for shoppers. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Well, don't, don't feel bad. I'm going to preach in a minute, all right? But I want to talk about these places that are, are attractional and that are affordable because I think they kind of have something to do with the text and that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, the, the text what we're talking about today, we're talking about uh, houses or places that you and I can uh, move to and the place we want believers to consider today is moving to the house of expectancy. All right. I, I want to say this real clearly. I want you to imagine with me that you've just been in a worship experience. You've been in a praise service. And uh, imagine with me that there are two people who have come to the service. They live on the same block. Uh, they're about the same age. One of them we're going to call Lisa and the other one we'll call Suze. Uh, and I can't explain it, but for some reason, uh, Lisa is all excited about the worship. She comes in, she's energized, she is, just has a glow on her face. She just can't wait for the worship to go. And when she leaves, she's telling everybody about what she has experienced. Uh -huh. Susan has been to the same church, has, sits on the opposite row, and she can't wait to go home. 
She is bored to death. She can't imagine why the choir didn't sing her song. The deacon prayed too long, and the pastor, we don't know where he was at. <laughs> Ever wonder why two folk can go to the same place and experience something totally Right. Have you ever wondered why folk can come to the same house of worship? Somebody can come and say, wow, it was the greatest experience I've ever had in my life. And other ones, like, hey, ain't nothing happened. <laughs> you know, I've had this problem as a preacher that I've been going around sometimes because I would hear people and, uh, you know, they would say things like, you know, uh, I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm. And some of the time, the way they were saying it was like, Reverend, you know, you didn't do anything mm -hmm. this week, so I'm going to go home and pray for you <laughs> for next week. Mm -hmm. uh, but what has really uh, 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 fascinated me is that people come here all the time, and you can look at the faces of folk, and you see some folk who are engaged, mm -hmm. And other folk who are totally mm -hmm. indifferent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've been wondering why. So I came up, I said to God, mm -hmm. what is it? So I got checking off my list. I said, could it be that uh, maybe my sermon, uh, the title didn't get it? <coughs> maybe it was the content. Maybe what I was talking about wasn't where they were. Maybe, maybe. Uh, the choir didn't sing as well as they wanted them to. Maybe it was too long. Maybe, maybe, maybe it was too short. I don't know. I, I'm struggling to find out what is it that goes on in the mind of people. And, and but then at the same time, I notice that there are some people who the same sermon, they come up to me and say, Remember, that was a great word. And some folks run right behind me and they're like, hey, I can't wait to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and so I've since been doing a lot of personal introspection and I've been asking myself, Lord, is it me? Mm -hmm. And then I came across this passage. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you what I discovered. Mm -hmm. That a lot of what we experience is related to what we pray. Mm -hmm. John the Baptist mm -hmm. is a cousin of Jesus. Mm -hmm. There aren't many people who can say that Jesus was their cousin. Mm -hmm. you, you know, we throw around the vernacular cousin, 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 right? But, but, but John could actually say, Jesus was my cousin. Mm -hmm. And, and because they were cousins that grew up together, they played together, but when they got grown, one day John, who uh, went around and he preached some really difficult sermons, and I, I was saying to myself, if I ever preached like John, could I get the response that John got? Because we live in a different world today. We live in a world today if you call people snakes, if you call somebody a brood of vipers, if you tell them that the axe is laid to the tree, and that we're going to burn you up, you'd be like, Reverend, I'll see you. I'm going to another place where at least I can get a positive message. But apparently what John would talk about this winnowing fork, and the person coming behind them burning folk up and, 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 and uh, you know, God judging everybody. Instead of folks saying, we don't want to hear John, folk came down to the Jordan River mm -hmm. to hear John and to be baptized by him. Yes. In fact, John lived in an age where we have what we call messianic fervor. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? That meant that when John was around, Everybody thought that God was coming back that day. Mm -hmm. So when people had children, they thought that their child could be the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Their child could be the deliverer. That child, that boy could be the one to set them free. 
And this energy was all over everywhere they went. And John started preaching. He said, repent. Turn away from your wicked ways. Turn away from your sin. Because God is on his way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they had this messianic fervor. They had this energy. Everybody was talking about it. God is about to do something. Mm -hmm. And so what happened is they had what we call the air of expectancy. Mm -hmm. right. And what happened when you have expectancy, mm -hmm. that's when people have anticipation. When they kind of come because they feel like something is going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, think about why a lot of people come to church. Now, I don't want you to tell me why you come, but think about a lot of folk come to church uh, not because they have expectancy, but a lot of folk come to church because they have expectations. Right, right, right. right. See, a lot of us come to church because we want God to do something. Right. And we don't want him to just do something. We told him before we got to church exactly what we wanted him to do. Uh -huh. We told them when to do it. Right. We told them what to do. We told them what color. We told them what model. And we told them what name. And some of us had the daring to say to God, I ain't going to be satisfied unless it is exactly what I want. <laughs> God lives in a messianic age where folk are looking forward to something big. In fact, there is this feeling that something great is about to happen. In John chapter number one, uh, the Bible says that John the Baptist had followers. He had disciples. And one day, John the baptizer is on the beach of the Jordan River and he baptizing folk and he looks down the road and he sees this guy approaching him and he stops everything and points to him and says to his boys, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Right. And this so this so thrilled John's disciples till the Bible makes it clear that John's boy right then stopped following John and went to follow Jesus. Yes. Jesus gets to John, who's in the Jordan, and comes up to John and says, John, baptize me. And John says, Hold on, are you crazy? You are the Lamb of God who's going to take away the sin of the world. You're going to set the world straight. I'm not even worthy to tie your shoes. He said, come on, baptize him. He baptizes him. And when Jesus steps in the water, the heavens open up. A voice from heaven, you know, just like a Cecil B. the Mills book movie and Charles and Heston, somebody, right. you know, the big voice, the booming, the dove comes down, rests on him, and the voice said, This is my beloved son, mm -hmm. and whom I'm well pleased. Mm -hmm. He, yeah. Mm -hmm. you imagine John seeing the heaven open up, hearing the big voice? I mean, you know. With, 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 you know, no stereo, no microphone, it's just boom. Mm -hmm. And his boys decide that we're going to follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so now, John knows that all the stuff that he's been telling is about to happen. Right. Because the Son of God has now taken on flesh, mm -hmm. and he's going to fix stuff. The problem is, is that John gets put in prison. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's not just prison, he's put on death row. Mm -hmm. He's sentenced to die. Mm -hmm. And scholars say that John the Baptist stayed there perhaps up to a year because Herod was afraid of John. Mm -hmm. He was afraid because of his superstition, but he was more afraid of the people. Mm -hmm. He was afraid because if he said that John the Baptist was not from God, he would have a revolution. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because the people said John was a prophet. John was like Elijah. John was like Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. And if he ever said that John wasn't a man of God, mm -hmm. he 
couldn't. If he was a prophet, why wasn't he listening? If he wasn't a prophet, then the people were going to get upset. So he figured the best thing to do with John is put him on ice, put him on in, in, in solitary confinement, lock him up, maybe he'll change his mind, and he'll stop talking about uh, uh, Herod and his wife. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. John didn't stop. Mm -hmm. Put him in jail, put him on death row. Now, I want to let you know how it works. You know, somebody in death row, somebody in prison, they can uh, uh, notify the authorities and give people permission to come see them. Mm -hmm. Just can't walk up in the prison mm -hmm. and see somebody. Okay. You got to be on the list. Mm -hmm. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. I mean, you just can't go up there. I'm Reverend Perry. I want to see. Now, are you on the list? Do you, do you have visitation privilege? Because if they didn't put you down, you can't go see them. Am I right? Well, I'm going to tell you what happened with John the Baptist. Probably the first person he put on his list to visit him was Jesus. <laughs> At the cop of the sun. Jesus of Nazareth. He, he, can, he can visit me anytime he wants. John had been in prison for a year and Jesus doesn't come. He got visitation rights, but he doesn't come see John. So John says to his boys, go talk to him. Because I want to know, is he the one? Or should we look for somebody else? All right, right. First point I want to make to you is this, is that location influences interpretation. What do you mean, Reverend? Well, I, I think this text is clear. That some of us are where we are because of where we are. That some of us, because of where we happen to be located, it has affected how we see the world. Right, yes, right, yes. right. Some of us are locked into our prisons. That's right. And because we are in our prisons, because we have been locked up and shut up in our dungeons, we can't see clear. Right, right. Some of us have vision that has been obfuscated, that has been blurred because of the folk who are around us. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Did you hear me? Some of us got blurred vision because we can't see past the people who are real close to us. John said, look at here, carry the reality here that when I was in the Jordan, when I was baptizing, when I was But put me in prison. Yes, put me on death row. Mm -hmm. Change my location. Mm -hmm. And you will affect my interpretation. All right. Well, what I, can I help you with this? Uh -huh. I, I want to say to some of you up in here uh -huh. that maybe what you need is a relocation. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right. Maybe you need to move from where you are. Uh -huh. To a different place that will give you a brand new perspective. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Help me hold it up. Uh -huh. You know, some of us we can't see that. So we're seeing the same old stuff we saw in 2000, uh -huh. same stuff we saw in 2007, uh -huh. same stuff we keep seeing over and over. And the problem is, is our location has influenced our interpretation. Uh -huh. All right, all right. Uh -huh. Jonah said he got a message from God uh -huh. to say, go to Nineveh and preach against that city and tell them if they don't repent, I'm going to destroy them. Jonah said, I ain't going. Uh -huh. right. right. Jonah said, God, I'd rather change my location. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. The Bible said he booked passage to go in the other direction. Yes, said, I won't go. I'll never preach to them. I'll be a traitor if I preach to my enemy. The Bible had a way of them. Suck up Jonah as he got thrown overboard. And in the body and the belly of a way, Jonah said, God, get me out of here. Right, right, right. 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 Come on, man. Your location. 
education will influence your... See, some of us know this because when things are good in our life, we don't have a problem with praising God. But as soon as we get near the valley, uh -huh. I ain't talking about going through. Right. But as soon as we get near the valley, mm -hmm. in the shadow of death, yeah. we start flaking out. We start acting right. strange with our relationship with God. Because for many of us, our relationship is about our location. Right. 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 I got a really yes. folks. Yes. See, yes. see yes. some folks in here can praise God yes. in this location. Uh -huh. right. But if you That's right. That's right. But some folk can worship him here. Uh -huh. But if they move locations to home, yeah. if they move to the cubicle at work, uh -huh. they have location and fluids in their interpretation. John's in jail. Now he, he can't see right. That's right. He wants to know. Mm -hmm. Jesus, I've been telling folk. That's right. That you gonna come and throw off the rest, the Roman uh, oppression. You are gonna set us free. Mm -hmm. And John said, I've been hearing messages come back from you, mm -hmm. and you've been saying God so loved the world mm -hmm. that He gave His only Son, mm -hmm. that whoever believes yeah. in Him yeah. shall not perish but have everlasting life. John said, I ain't had no problem with that, Jesus. Mm -hmm. But did you have to go on to say that God did not come into the world to condemn the world, but through him everybody, everybody. would be saved? Right. Yes. Right. Yes. And are you talking, Jesus, about the Romans? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Huh. And I, I, I was telling folk you were coming, but I didn't know that you were going to be talking this stuff. Mm. Mm. In fact, Jesus, I've been hearing about you over in Jersey City. And they tell me that you got the temerity, the audacity to hang out with sin. Uh -huh. yes, sir. Uh -huh. yes, you let women let their hair down in public. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You touch folk who got lepers. Uh -huh. uh -huh. We talk about oppression. And you talk about parties. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. I'm in prison. Yeah. And you won't see me. Yes, sir. But what kind of God is that? John said the problem in the text is this: is that John has uh, uh, moved from expectancy mm -hmm. to expectation. Mm -hmm. Now, let me help you with that. Let me help you with that. See, see, when you have expectancy, nobody has to ask you. That's right. Right. To praise God. You That's can't right. wait to get to church. That's right. That's right. Hello, let me see if I can help you. Come on now. Come so, on. So, see, 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 mm -hmm. when you come to God with an air of expectancy, mm -hmm. you don't come putting demands on him. That's right. You don't come telling him what to do. Yeah. You don't tell him where to do it. Mm -hmm. You don't tell him. You just say, God, any way you bless yeah. Say it, say it. Say it. Say it, say it, say it. But the problem is in the church yeah. is that many of us have started out with expectation. Yeah. We came excited, but our expectation moved, mm -hmm. expectancy moved from expectancy to expectation. Uh -huh. See, the expectation is about what you're going to do for uh -huh. me. Uh -huh. A lot of us in church, we are, we, 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 we have our assumptions that we make about God. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we, we say God is good when He does something uh -huh. good. Right. Oh y'all ain't right. 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 Yes, sir. But, but, but a lot of us can't do what Job did. Uh -uh. Job said, though he slay me. Yes, yes sir. Yes. Yeah, I'm going. He slay us. We like, hold on, God. Right. I've been paying my tithes. I've been coming to right. church. Right. I'm at least as good as Carrie. How come this is happening to me? Yes, right. Sir. Our expectations of God are that some of us expect that if we give God a dollar, uh -huh. He's got to give us a hug. Right. Right. That's right. Right. That's right. 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 Talk about it. I ain't giving up my hard-earned money. Right. Uh -huh. You know, 
if I give something, you know, it's going to be a cold day. I mean, you know, if I give something. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You sure better bless me. Yes, sir. And not only do we do that to God, we don't say, God, you go bless. We start telling God how I want to be blessed. Yes, mm. yeah. You know, you go tell God I want. You go shop and say, God, I want. Yeah. <laughs> Hold that one mm. and size 12. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you know, guys, you talk about, you see those shoes, God, give me that other side of them. You, right. you tell, you, 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 you're not content to be blessed. You want to tell God oh. how to bless. All right. 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 See, so the right. problem with John is that John had some expectations and he figured if you're going to be the savior of the world, then the first thing you ought to do is save me. Amen. 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 And when Jesus doesn't act the way John expects, John moves from expectancy mm -hmm. to expectation. Yes, sir. Well, let me see if I can't wrap this up and help you see this. How many times do folk come to church and expect somebody else to bring the wood? Right. <laughs> right. Come to church and say, you bring the fire. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Come to church and say, well, I know so-and-so going to be there, and uh, they got some kindling to get the fire mm -hmm. started. Mm -hmm. And, and, and you bring yourself and you sit in the corner uh -huh. and you wait and you say, hold on, mm -hmm. didn't nobody bring matches? Did mine? Did mine? <laughs> say, Reverend. Now, what do you mean, Reverend? Well, how many times do we come in the presence of God expecting yes, somebody to make us happy? Yes, yes. Sir. Yes. yes, sir. Now, now we want them to sing. We mm -hmm. want them to pray, uh -huh. we want them to preach, yeah. and if they don't live up to our uh -huh. expectations, uh -huh. then we say nothing happened. Right. 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 right, right, Yes, sir. Jesus tells a story to help folk understand about this air of expectancy. Uh -huh. Jesus says that uh, he talks about a man who was uh, pretty well to do, mm -hmm. and uh, we got a New president is talking about mm -hmm. getting everybody back to work, but mm -hmm. this guy, he had so much work that mm -hmm. he, he didn't have enough workers mm -hmm. <laughs> to do the work that he had. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he had his workers, he had his men go out in, in, in the morning. Now, now, imagine this, the day started, the work day started at 6 a.m. And so he has his folk go out into the streets and hire people. And he hires the first group of people. Listen to this. Mm -hmm. And he says to them, mm -hmm. I, I will hire you mm -hmm. for one denarius mm -hmm. or a penny or a day's wage. Okay? And you know what they say? Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm going to have some money. Yes, I'm sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody argued with him. Nobody said no, it's too, it's not enough. They said okay because the reality was they were unemployed. Right. Yes, Y'all right. still with me? Right. Uh -huh. right. Right. So he comes out at uh, 6 a.m. and the first hour he has to hire more workers. And so he goes out and said, I hire you mm -hmm. for a denarius, a day away. Mm -hmm. They set the terms, mm -hmm. they shake hands, and they go to the field and they work. And then he discovers at every three hour mm -hmm. interval that he still needs more work. Mm -hmm. So at nine o'clock he goes out again mm -hmm. and he hires some people and he agrees to their payment term. Mm -hmm. And they say, okay, mm -hmm. at 12 noon, he still needs workers. And he said to the ones at 12 o'clock, he said to them, look at here, whatever's right, mm -hmm. yes, sir. I'll pay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hmm. Three o'clock, he goes out and needs some more workers. He sees them and says, look at here, whatever's right, mm -hmm. yes, sir. I'll pay. Mm -hmm. At five o'clock, quitting time is at six. At five o'clock, he goes out into the to the street and finds some more out of workers and says to them, I, whatever is right, yes, sir. 
Yes, sir. I'll pay. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Just go to work. Mm -hmm. So now, here comes the foreman, the paymaster. He starts at the line, and the line is in reverse order. And so the folk who have been recently hired are the first ones to get paid. Mm -hmm. And so what happened here, there is this air of expectancy. God, because I, I, the ones who came in the heat of the day, they were only told whatever was right. I'll pay. They don't have a contract. They don't have an agreement. They just have an expectation that whoever this man is, he going to give me something. Yes, sir. So can you imagine you at the front of the line and you just got to work at 5 o'clock and the bell sounded at 6 o'clock and you saying to yourself probably, I ain't expecting much. Right, right. Yes, sir. But whatever I get, I'm going to be grateful. Right, right, right. Whatever this man blessed me with, it is more than what I had. Yes, so I'm just going to be thankful yes. for whatever I get. Mm. So there's an air of expectancy. There is this thing that I don't know what I'm going to get, but whatever it gets me, I'm going to be thrilled uh -huh. because it's more than what I, yeah. what I had. Right, right, so, right. so the paymaster goes into and gives those who came went to work at 5 o'clock an envelope. And when they open the envelope and they look at it, they see a denarius. They see that they have been paid a full day's wage. Uh -huh. yes, oh, I wish I was there. Uh -huh. I wish I could help you see what it happened when somebody whispered to the person behind them and they said, man, he only worked out. Uh -huh. right. And he got a full day's wage. Yeah. Yeah, can't you see the aura of expectancy? You at the end of the line, and it just still it back to you. The guy who went to work at five o'clock, right, he right, got right, a right. full day pay. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. saying, boy, I know. Yes, yes. Yes. Yes, sir. God went to work at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, looks in his envelope, say, I can't believe my eyes. He said, I only worked three hours, and he paid me for a full day's work. Yes, sir. Glory! Yeah, yeah. 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 Woo! Yeah. Glory, Man, all the air got so thick and palatable, you could cut it. You could hear folk at the end of the line cheering. Go, 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 go. Man, they can't wait for him to get to them because, man, these guys didn't work three hours and they got a whole day's pay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Boy, I know I'm going to be blessed. <laughs> I'm not just counting my blessing, I'm spending mine. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> then it goes down to the ones at 12 mm -hmm. and the ones who came at 9. Mm -hmm. Then it gets to the ones mm -hmm. who you went out and got at 6 in the morning. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Right. And when they open up their envelope, mm -hmm. their jaw drop. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Uh, hmm. No, no, no. Hmm. I don't, I don't but let me talk to the manager. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For the foreman, I'm going to read this. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> put an agreement says this is not fair. When he yelled, somebody got to help me. Yes, I worked all day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This air of expectancy, the bubble has been burst. Mm -hmm. And now the person is saying, look, I, I, you know, I had expectancy. I had hope. I, I believed that you were going to do right by me. But now my expectation is yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. that if you bless them, you got to do better by me. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Foreman, come over and say, look, brother. When I hired you at 6 a.m., mm -hmm. I gave you a contract. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And I told you I would pay you mm -hmm. a day away. Yes, sir. The problem is, mm -hmm. is that you expected more. Yes, sir. Even though you agreed mm -hmm. 
Yes, sir. For a certain amount. Right, right, right. 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 Oh, so y'all in here. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. yes sir. Right. Uh -huh. So see, see, the problem with Charlie, yes, right. he said, so see, y'all that went to work at 6 o'clock and went to work at 9 o'clock, y'all mad with the, with the boss, but the problem ain't with the boss. The problem is with your expectation. Yes, right. uh -huh. The problem is that the boss had already told you uh -huh. he was going to pay you yeah. what he decided. And he didn't lie to you. He gave you exactly. Right, right, right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me, let me yeah, turn yeah, toward yeah, yeah. home and, and share with y'all that that's the problem with some of us in the church. Right. Mm -hmm. And then instead of having an air of expectancy, mm -hmm. we come to God with expectation. Some of us got the nerve to get mad at God because he hired folk at five in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And we be telling them, God, but look here, I've been here for 30 years. Mm -hmm. God, I've been working when nobody else was working. God, I was working when nobody was looking. God, I've been toiling in the heat of the day. And he said, I told you when you signed up with me that if you work for me, the wages of sin and death. But right, right, give right. God right. We get in trouble when we go to God and we start telling them how to pay. Uh -huh. right. We start telling them what we expect. Right. And so we move from this level of expectancy to entitlement. Yeah. Mm. That's why some of us can't praise God because uh -huh. we think God is bound to come and sit at our seat. Uh -huh. It's right. bound to whisper in our ear and yes. say, uh, are you ready yet? Yes, sir. Right. Right. Uh -huh. You know, I, I know you don't like clapping your hands uh -huh. too much. That's right. Yeah. Uh -huh. But could, could you give me hmm. just a little? Yes, sir. And, and then, then when you get that little praise, you're mm -hmm. like, you know, God, I'm doing the best I can. Uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. But when God meets you at your place yeah. of expectation, yeah. you don't have a problem worshiping him. That's right. You don't have a problem running to him like you crazy. That's right. But God does what you expect. Yeah. But I wonder if yeah. there's anybody in yeah. this house yeah. who can say to God, even though you don't do what I want, yeah. even though you don't bless me the way I see it, yeah. yeah. I will yeah. praise you. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Testimony. Yes. But here, understand this. This is what I want you to get. When you got an air of expectancy, Jesus. baby, every time I come in here, I'm expecting God to do something. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But I can't tell him. What to do. I can't tell him when to do it. Yes, I can't tell God how to move. Uh -uh. Sometimes I don't know what He's up to. Yes. But I believe that He's a God I can't hurt. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Now for John, John got mixed up. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said to John, John, look at here. You can't see. But the blind will see this one. Yes, sir. The lame walk. Yes, sir. The deaf 
again. Yes, sir. The dead have been raised. Right, right. And yeah. the poor have the gospel. Yes, God, sir. John, go back and read the Old Testament. Yes, this is what the Bible said I was going to do. Yes, sir. I'm doing exactly what the Father expected me to do. Yes, sir. It's terrible if you can't praise God That's only, right. only when something good happens. Mm -hmm. That's why some of us look on and our praise. Because yeah. mm -hmm. we got to have somebody shout for us. Uh -huh. You know, somebody else stand up, we can get in there and shout on stand up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But maybe when God does something for you. Yes. And the thing about expectancy is right. it may not be what I expect. Mm -hmm. Amen, sir. It may not be what I wanted. Amen, sir. But then you hear folks say, he didn't have to bless me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But he did. But he did. But he did. Yeah. But he did. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 We're going to extend this invitation to you. We definitely want to give a shout out to all of those that are here in the sanctuary, to those of you who are out there in the land of Facebook, online, viewing us. You can still answer this invitation. Yes, sir. This is the greatest invitation I've ever offered to anybody. I'm so glad to offer it because you don't have to have money to receive. Yes, sir. You don't have to look good. You don't have to be fine. You can be wherever you are and you can still accept this invitation. Yes, in fact, Jesus said it like this. Come unto me. Yes. All ye who labor and are heavy laden. Yes, sir. And I'll give you rest. Yeah. If you're sick and tired mm. of being sick and tired. Yes, sir. If you're sick and tired and you found out somewhere today that you need to change your yes. location, yes. I want to extend you this invitation to come to Jesus. Oh, yeah. He said, Behold, I stand at the door. And all you got to do is open up your heart and let it in. There are three houses that you and I need to have. Get tied up to as Christians. We need to go into the house of worship. Right, right, right. We need to go into the house of prayer. Right. Uh -huh. And we need to go into the house of expectancy. Right. You ought to believe God that God's going to do something when you get to where yes. you yes. right. You need to stop telling God what to do uh -huh. and just believe that He's going to do it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Me. See, when you go to God and say, God, I don't care. How you do? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to mandate and dictate to you that you got to do it on this day, and this hour, yes, and this way. Yes, Jesus said, "Look at here, I can do the impossible." Yes, yes. sir. Stop trying to hamstring God. Stop right. trying to take God and define Him by your needs. That's right. God is greater than you are. Yes, yes. sir. And He did. He, he demonstrates to us that look at Him. He will bless you. If you have an air of expectancy. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. But if you come to him and tell him you entitled, you can't make God do nothing. Right, no, right, sir. Right. You can hand your list of expectations. God, you need to do this. God, you need to take care of my boss. God, you need to take care of my children. God, you need to straighten out my stuff. But God said, look, you can't tell me. That's right. I'm the sovereign one. Yes. You need to bow down in front of God uh -huh. and say, God, any way you want yeah, it. Yeah, 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 sure. Take yeah, your sure. hands off stuff. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to extend the invitation to you. You can come to Jesus. There are a lot of people who quit coming to Jesus with joining the church. We want you to join the church, but going to church is not going to get you to heaven. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. You got to know Jesus Christ. Yes. And you got to know him mm -hmm. as the partner yes. of your sin. Yes. And yes, you are sin. Yes. To sin means to miss the mark. I don't care who you are, you're a sinner. Yes. 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 You, you, you haven't done all that God told you to do. Right. You, right. you may you may think that you are, you, you might think you're better than I am. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. But you're still a sinner. Yes. Yes. And we need salvation. Yes. And the only one who offers us salvation is Jesus. Yes. 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 He says, come unto me. Just the way you are. Yes. 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 Scrap your expectations. Yes. He may not do what you want. 
He may not ever deliver you the way you want to be delivered. But he says to Apostle Paul, who has a thorn in his flesh. And Paul said three times he called on God. And because his expectation was, God, I raised people from the dead. God, I've done all of these things. I've written half of the New Testament. But then God turned to Paul and said, Paul, look at you, my grace yes. is sufficient. Yes. My grace is all you need. Yes. Stop demanding me to do stuff. Some stuff God that won't take from you because He knows the moment you take it, you're going to stop calling. Yes, yes, Some stuff we got to live with. Mm-hmm. So I want to spend the invitation. Wherever you are, when you come, if you're on the main floor or not, we just make your way on down the front. We want to pray with you. We want to help you and meet Jesus today. If you're somewhere watching this, I want you to. Find a church, a believing church, Bible believing church. Find a Bible open. I, I, would, I, would, I would recommend that you start reading the Gospel of John. Get introduced to the life of Jesus. Get a church that teaches the Word of God. I don't care where you go, as long as you get somewhere where you can get under the Word of God. God bless you. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain. Amen.